it's time for your daily dose of all things Chicago sports. This is the Daily Score. Now, here's your host, Mark Grody. Hello and welcome in to the Daily Score. I am Mark Grody and this is the Monday after a Bears win. So there is going to be a lot of positivity in this edition of the Daily Score, which is absolutely refreshing. And we're going to start with Jaquan Brisker because he had a monster game yesterday. He had 17 tackles. But the bigger picture view of it is that it's beginning to look like the Bears have a legitimate defensive core and you know and then maybe a lot of these pieces will lead the bears into the future now there are some question marks like jalen johnson and eddie jackson but listen to jacon brisker talking about this bears team and what it might look like in a few years yeah i'm definitely rooting for jalen um always um especially him making you know a lot of big plays for us um these last couple games and the the way he's been playing his technique and um even in the run game or even screens um he's been very physical on the perimeter and showing that he could do it in the run or pass game and um I'm always going to be rooting for players like that especially um players who give in Chicago all that that they got so um you know guys like him guys like Bo and you know other guys like that um I'm definitely rooting for and they're definitely great players and um they they show it day in and day out and um they they've been pouring it all um even while I came in here they they showed me what the bear culture could be and should be and um I'm just you know raising it up a, a higher level and um, with those guys, so. Do you feel like you, you guys are establishing a long-term core? Do you think yeah. your core is here? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, it's a great secondary. Um, we're very close. We're very tight. You know, I know where the, the, those guys are, even without even contacting them. That's how close we are. And um, you know, we have a lot of great times together. And um, you know, I love those guys for sure, no doubt. So I think we are establishing some very special <laughs> here, and um, you can see it out there. You know, in the run game, in the pass game, and the energy. The energy is contagious. So um, I don't see how, you know, I mean, you could go in a different direction. Like Eddie said to me um, last week or two weeks ago, you never see you know, a secondary like this on one team or safeties like this on one team. Usually you get, you know, a great safety on the right side, or every safety on the left, or however it may be. But what he said to me, that stuck to me, and um, it's going to stick with me for a while. Yeah, I mean, those two do work well together. Eddie Jackson is not what he was in 2018, but, you know, we all kind of saw the, you know, in 2018, you had Eddie Jackson working with Adrian Amos, and those two were in, in concert for sure. And there's no doubt about it that Brisker and Eddie Jackson are in concert. Now, the Eddie Jackson, Adrian Amos connection was, I thought, was better than than this, but this is very good. Um, now, Eddie Jackson's an interesting question because we talk so much about Jalen Johnson and will he get an extension. This might be it for Eddie Jackson as well um, in terms of will they bring him back. What he does have going for him, Eddie Jackson, is that they do like Eddie Jackson. This isn't one of those players that they kind of look at side-eyed because he wasn't their guy. He likes the buy-in from Eddie Jackson. You know, again, he's not the the all-pro safety or Pro Bowl safety that he once was, but there is a, a certain poetry and motion. Man, now I'm stealing from Montez Sweat here. Um, that those two guys have, they are in concert, a good chemistry uh, between those two guys. A big switch now. Um, we'll get back to the defense and specifically Montez Sweat here in a second. We'll hear from Flus and Lucas Patrick and um, a couple other guys. But Jaquan Brisker, man, he was asked towards the end of his presser today on all the late hits that Justin Fields has taken since he has been in the league, really, and the calls that have not been made. Get some calls. But very few. They're, right away, he takes a hit in the game on Sunday. And no flag. And Fields is even just like, what's going on here? And Fields has commented on it before. Flus has commented it on before. But Jaquan Brisker went to bat on all those late hits. If, if it was us, they'll be throwing it. It wouldn't even be a reaction. They'll just throw it. So uh, I think they should just treat him fair. He is a quarterback. Um you know, I know he's two thirty, and he's running a four three. So, but it doesn't really matter. He's still a quarterback. We have to protect him. And um, it's disappointing. Obviously, the the other team being told to do dirty stuff 
after the play, hit him like this a certain way. It's obviously being told just by the way they've been, been treating him these last couple of weeks. A lot of shots to the head, and it's, it's very disappointing seeing a guy like that um, get hit and take hits like that. And one of those hits, you know, you know, God forbid, you know, could be something very bad. So um, the, I think the league need to get on that and notice that it, it's, it's bad. But a common thought in the locker room that it's sort of systematic that as I think you just said that they're coaching these guys to hit fields hard or late or at the echo. Yeah. Um you just tell like just from the other teams, like we don't we like, you know, Coach Flusen, he doesn't tell us to do anything like that, but um, you could just tell like the just the way like they just, they just, you know, hit him after their play. They just try to like you just tell how they're just trying to tug and, you know, try to do whatever they can to get him out the game. And um, it's obvious. It's obvious. You know, all them head shots yesterday, all them late hits, um, trying to mess with, you know, his hands and things like that, it's obvious. So um, Lee just has to, you know, protect um, the quarterback, and we're going to protect ours at all times. So. Yeah, and th- this might be the one that does get the, the league's attention in more than one way. I don't know if, if Brisker's going to hear from the league for what he's saying, but I think this is one of those cases where somebody needed to say something. And it is true that it is it can be difficult from a defender's perspective when to lay off on fields because of how fast he is, because of how fast he pops up. So from the player's perspective, I don't know how dirty they're planning to be when they go out there, but the referees certainly need to be better at it, work on it, look at it, check the video, you know, just like the film review that coaches do every day. I think the refs might want to put together a mega cut of Justin Fields and what they can do better to protect him and other players and quarterbacks like him who are so fast and explosive that sometimes it's hard to tell been in the league now this is fourth year so you you better get you better be able to tell what's a dirty hit and and what's not but good stuff from Jaquan Brisker for sure now on to to Montez Sweat and Maddie Berflus was asked a great question about Sweat because we have seen this defense blossom and it was starting to blossom even before Montez Sweat got here but there's a discernible difference with him here so the question to Flus here now is if Sweat had been here all year, is this what the defense would have looked like? Has has just you know been fantastic. Uh, he's got great energy. You know he's a great teammate. To answer your question, I would say you know it's always great. It's an uptick because of the great pass rusher, and that's what he is. You know, so they have to lean more attention to him. Um, you saw yesterday they were, they were chipping him several times, which gives singles to other guys. The fact that we, the last sack that Double J had, you know, he was a pick by Tez, and, and Jay comes around and, and has a nice sack on the on the last one there, which is great. A consummate pro, and to answer your question, yes, he he definitely helps others, and it's been an uptick in a lot of ways for the turnovers. You know, uh, enabled us to play more coverage, you know, not pressure as much on those on those situational downs, and get home with four. And uh, that's been a big part of it. Did you see somebody that you thought, we can actually make this guy better than what he's been? Yeah. Yeah, we do see that. And I, and I think that's the standards of how we operate. You know, when you get a standard and you bring a guy in that has that talent and he plays to that high standard, there's going to be more production. There's going to be more intensity. And it's going to spread throughout the whole group. And, uh, you know, that's that's what we're starting to see. You know, so you play at your practice, and he's been practicing his butt off and hustling in practice, and, you know, his stamina is increasing, and uh, he's doing a really good job with that part of it. Isn't it nice when big-time deals work out <laughs> in any of our sports for any of our teams? And it's a tiny sample size so far for Montez Sweat. But the return is already coming in, not just his individual statistics, because he got the double digit sacks for the first time in his career. And he has looked like a different pleasure, a different player than when he was in Washington, but just an even more effective player than he was in Washington. So it's really nice to see refreshing um, to see what Montez Sweat has done and what he has meant and that you can. Um, there are such things as make goods in the NFL because Ryan Poles messed up on the Chase Claypool second round pick, but this second round delivery, um, so far is paying off for the Bears in a big way, and it does feel very sustainable. Moving on, the famous now fourth and 12 touchdown play that essentially put the game away yesterday, where the Bears drew them off sides, drew the Lions off sides 
um, and with the Justin Fields' as cadence and all sorts of weird stuff going on on the offensive line, they draw him off sides, you get a free play, and that's exactly how that play went down to, to DJ Moore ultimately. Here's Lucas Patrick, though, and his view of everything that went down. It's definitely a, a, a fun play as a center. I got to be honest. Like uh, when when the certain situation comes up and 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 I, we get the play call, um, I actually get pretty excited for it because it's. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. I was pretty elated on that. Uh, but yeah, you got to be locked in. You got to know. You got to know that they're clearly offsides because they can step across and go back. And then if I rip it, it would be a false start. There's just there's a lot of nuances to that. Um, a lot of practice that goes into it. Like, fortunately, on the, on the scout team this week, um, some were not planned, and then some gets you'll just mix it up. And, you know, we could have a play that's, you know, a goal line play and snap it. And so it's it's something that we do train. But, um, yeah, in that moment, you got to be locked in. And it's weird. Like, your peripherals get better because you're so, like, paying attention to it and kind of keeping, you know, one eye this way, one eye that way. Hard start pumping a lot more when you see the guy actually cross the line. No, I mean, uh, fortunately, I've had quite a few reps of free plays, um, both practice games. Um, so it's not something new to me. And um, you know, credit to everyone there. I mean, it was it was a well executed play, and um, it was it was good to get that one there and just really swing the momentum. As I'm sure you know, that, that was a Rogers specialty in Green Bay. How similar was that play with with Justin? with you and Justin, to what Rodgers used to do all the time uh, with the Packers. I mean, they jumped off sides. We snapped the ball and got a touchdown. So you, you, you could look at the uh, the other plays that we've had doing that, but I, you can't execute it any better. That's what I'll say. I will say something, man. There is no more loyal player to the Bears organization than Lucas Patrick. I mean, this guy fully appreciates the money that they gave him. And the, I mean, I remember when they signed him, it was very emotional for him. So there is a loyalty that this guy has to the organization for sure. And the reason I'm, I'm saying that, like, why, why are you bringing this up? Because he just couldn't bring himself to, to say Aaron Rodgers' name. That's why I said that, that's all I'll say, because he's a bear. Um, and he did, you know, we asked him a lot of stuff about Green Bay when he first got here. But um, as is the case with most guys that come from the Packers, once they come here, then they, you know, th- this is where their loyalty is, because guess what? Money talks. One more thing from Matt Eberflus. Jaquan Brisker had what actually Eberflus said was 18 tackles. It had been 17, but now it's 18. Um, and here was Matt Eberflus, a little follow-up today on, on Brisker and all those tackles. Uh, he is passionate, you know, and it's always exciting to watch him do that. And He's always right next to me at uh, we would do the uh, national anthem, you know, so we always lock arms so he, I can feel his energy right there. So he's, uh, he's a special guy. Did you, did you tell him you had 21 in a game once? 21? Yeah. Yeah, I said he's got some work to do. <laughs> yeah. Did uh, did Flus let you know he had 21 tackles in a game once in college? I think he he did earlier this year during camp. He he kind of slipped that in there and, and said that on a on a on a quiet tip. But I, I that's not my first time hearing that. Is that is that your next goal now? After 17, I, Flus said it was 18 in his count. Yeah, 18. So um, that is my next goal to beat Flus for sure. So. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, and he did. Hey, I got some uh, got some numbers here. Matt Eberflus, when he played with the Toledo Rockets in his senior year, uh, 21 tackles against Northern Illinois, ranks as the fifth best performance by a Rocket tackler um, in a single game. So, yeah, the, the Flus, it's coming out a little bit. The Flus prowess in the MAC. So... Good stuff all around. See how things change when the, the Bears win um, all around. It was good for the Bears as they'll be at Cleveland next week. That is it for this edition of The Daily Score. For Ray Diaz, I am Mark Grody. We will talk to you tomorrow on The Daily Score.